So I used to try to play the middle field when it came to street preachers, the LGBTQ community, their pride parades and what they do out there in the streets and the interactions between them both. Sometimes I would get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm defending the street preacher. And then on the other side, I'm trying to defend the other person because it's like maybe they don't want to be bothered. And it's like, I get it. We're trying to get this message across. But do we have to go over there knowing that it's going to strike something in them? But it comes to a point where I have finally made a decision. And I am finally on the side that I know that I should have been on the entire time. But I'm just trying to make some peace here. But without that, man, this street preacher was completely disrespected. And I don't care what anyone says. There is no more middle ground. The LGBTQ community, the pride parades that they're doing, and the things that they are doing to other innocent believers and Christians who are just there doing the same thing they're doing. This Christian street preacher and every other Christian street preacher is just excited and happy to be outside expressing what they care and love about. And that is exactly what the LGBTQ community is doing. But for some reason, they can go waving their flags around, waving their thorns and horns all in the sky with their suggestive outfits and their suggestive behavior. And they can do it and we can put it on the news and we can flaunt it and everyone must be in agreement to it. But if a Christian stands on a corner and says the name Jesus and says the word repent, and says, Jesus loves you, there's a better life, turn away. This, what you're getting ready to see, is the ridiculousness, the demonicness, everything that is wrong with society is what you are getting ready to see. Let's get into this. to your heart. I want to tell you guys, you know, it's the sounding and the blowing of the trumpet that you guys are going to get right with Jesus. And I want to tell you guys that Jesus Christ is the only way who's going to take you out of a life of anger, take you out of a life of lust, take you out of a life of depression. He's the only way. They really sitting there chanting that about God? God? God is not gay. This is demonic. This is crazy. People are going to say that the Christians are crazy or that we're terrible or we're aggressive or we're trying to indoctrinate. And it's like, bro, you could run this back in any way, shape or form. I'm sorry. We are not. This lady is sitting here screaming. Look at her. She looks like a demon. There's literally a demon trying to come out of her. That demon is so mad at everything that he's saying. That lady comes in and pushes him. What if he did that? He's not the one doing that. He's being persecuted left and right. That is insane. Saying, I cannot believe that this, these are adults, these are grown people, and this is how they're behaving, and this is what that community promotes. But it's terrible if someone who is a uh, member of the body of Christ, if they're saying something, they're automatically the terrible person. But this behavior that we see with this lady practically wigging herself out, screaming, performing an exorcism right here in public, that's not okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, because we're just going to say she's free to throw that tantrum because she she's the one being persecuted? Nah, my man is the one just holding a mic saying words and she's screaming and someone comes in and linebackers this guy and pushes him, catches him off balance. Like, what are we doing here? What's right? What's okay? What's wrong? We're focusing on the complete wrong things. This is demonic. Then you got them chanting that God is gay. Why are you so angry? You, you, this is a bunch of adults. These are grown adults that are throwing tantrums because they're being convicted. Exactly what that gentleman said. This is all conviction. They're acting this way because they have been convicted. They know what they're doing is wrong. So they're fighting. People will fight to stay where they're at. You know, a lot of people love to be in these kinds of positions because it's where they get the most attention. It's because if I identify with all these issues and all these problems, then people see me and people want to be seen and people want to be validated. But the problem is, is that most people want to be validated 
for the wrong things. They want validation in the wrong areas. And then this is what you get. A bunch of adults, grown adults. These are people that are supposed to be productive members to our society. And this is how they're choosing to spend their free time. I'm not saying you have to agree. The proof is in the pudding. Most of these people do not agree with anything the word of God says. Most of these people do not even agree with God. So I'm not expecting you to agree with what this gentleman is saying. But what I am expecting you to do is to give him the same respect as he's giving you. Because he's not doing anything wrong anything he's standing there and he's talking and this woman is screaming and pushing it imagine the hot breath in the spit that's coming all on my man's face now, of course he's gonna back up but it's like what makes you think that's okay if this guy started wigging out all these people are probably gonna jump him and go nuts this is just a bunch of demons hanging out with other demons and people get very comfortable. It's like they cuddle up with their demons and they're like, oh, I just want to stay with this demon. Just keep me with this demon. No matter what happens, I just wanted to stay here because it's a crutch. It makes me feel good. People like me because I have this demon. People like me because I have these problems. I have these issues. I have this hurt. I have this pain. They love me because of it. And I feel a part of this community because we're all broken and we want to stay broken and we don't want change because... The only thing that identifies us is our brokenness. That's a demon that wants to keep you down. Everything about this is demonic. He's not saying anything nine times out of ten, practically ten times out of ten, the street preacher isn't saying anything that's false. You don't have to agree. The LGBTQ community, as they're out pride parading around, they do not have to agree with the doctrine. They do not have to agree with the word of God. They don't. That's okay. Go ahead. Not agree with it. It's totally fine. It's your choice to make. But you don't have to respond with complete lies like this woman screaming. And I'm going to run it back. Are we going to run it back one more good time for good time's sake? Because it's ridiculous. This woman screaming and them chanting that God is gay. You don't have to say false things. Come on. Really? Like, t tell me that you want the worst punishment of all time without telling me you want to receive the worst punishment of all time, it's chanting something as blasphemous as they were chanting. Now, if your ears can take it, and if your eyes want to behold some of this craziness, just one more time before we wrap this up. Let's get into this. to your heart. I want to tell you guys, you know, it's the sounding and the blowing of the trumpet that you guys are going to get right with Jesus. And I want to tell you guys that Jesus Christ is the only way who's going to take you out of a life of anger, take you out of a life of lust, take you out of a life of depression. He's the only way. God is dead! God is dead! God is dead! God is dead! That's completely terrible. I'm sorry. That's completely terrible. The only reason that they do that and they do what they do is because they know they're wrong. Because I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. If I was out having a church picnic and there was some satanic guy standing on the corner telling people on a microphone, you better believe in God and you uh, you better stop believing in God and you, you better turn to the devil, turn to the devil. Oh, he's the one that you need. I'm not going to care anything he's saying because I know that you're lying and I know there's no truth in you. It's stupid. You're just wasting your time. It's dumb. But the fact that these people have a response and they get angry and they fight back and they scream and get out of here, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. That tells me that they know they're wrong, but they don't want to take accountability for their wrongdoings because they just want to stay in their tight knit community that's full of other people that are just going to keep rubbing their backs and letting them know that what they're doing and who they are is okay. And they don't have to change anything and everything and everyone that they're met with in life just needs to accept them as they are. But no, 
that that's just not how it is. I think that's a little bit of a narcissistic request for anyone to make for us to just casually go through life and have no intention on developing in Christ and developing ourselves and maturing and growing and just walking instead of just walking around telling people you just better take me as I am and deal with it because this is who I am. Well, great. That might be who you are, but I'm interested to know who are you in Christ? Because I guarantee you that's going to be a better version of this person that you're saying, take me as I am, because that's just who I am. These people know they're wrong. And no one can tell me otherwise. The proof is in the pudding. The behavior speaks for itself. Like I said, if someone's yelling lies, something that I know is not true, I don't entertain it. But these preachers, these street preachers, they're not yelling lies. They're yelling truth. And they're speaking about the truth, the one and only truth. That's Jesus Christ. That's our God, our Lord and Savior. And these people are bothered by it because they know it's truth. And they don't want to hear it because the more they hear that name and the more they hear about the good news of Jesus Christ, who's there to save them, in fact, not to condemn them. They're convicted from it because they know it comes with a whole lot of change and it comes with a whole lot of turning away. And they have to accept the fact that they've been lied to and that they've been lying to themselves because that's what the devil is. He's a liar. And he's spoken to them too much. So it's a lot they have to work through. A lot of mental health challenges that come with that because it's like poof, a lot of big things that could come during a conviction. So that's why you see that lady that you saw just screaming, exercising herself. <laughs> because sometimes when that flesh gets so irritated, when that demon gets so irritated, it does something just like that. Pray for these people, man. Pray for these people. They're just lost. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That's all I got for you guys on this one, man. I appreciate it if you stayed all the way through. To the next one, guys. I'm out.